everybody's quiet and ready and anticipating. This, the time now is 2.39 p.m. and this is our District 30 Toastmasters 2016 Fall Conference Evaluation Speech Contest. I'd like to present to you Contest Chair Sherry Miller DTM. Off to a late start, but I promise you it will be worth it. We have nine contestants who are at the top of their game as far as evaluations are concerned. So, first, if you have a cell phone, computer, iPod, anything that's going to make noise at the most inopportune times, then please turn it off now so it doesn't. <laughs> I want to welcome you all to the 2016 Fall Speech Evaluation Contest. We are honored to have as our Toastmaster of the Day. I know his name. <laughs> Garrett Gray. Our contest Toastmaster is no stranger to the district stage. He has competed on a Toastmasters district stage ten times in his four years as a Toastmaster. Garrett has given two TED Talks this year. His first was a TEDx. IIT in April called The Truth About Success. Google it on YouTube's TEDx Talks channel and enjoy. He'd appreciate the views. Maybe we can get him up to what, like 100,000? <laughs> and his second TED Talk called Life Lessons from My Cat, Mr. T, <laughs> was in mid October at Tinley Park Public Library inaugural TEDx event. Uh, that will drop to YouTube in the upcoming months. Garrett gives a big thanks to you as he attributes his friends at Toastmasters as the number one reason for his speaking accomplishments and his continued growth in speaking. Simply put, you guys rock! Here he is, an engineer by day, artist by night, and loving husband always. The 2015 District 30 Evaluation Champion, Mr. Garrett Gray. Thank you, Sherry. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmasters, guests, and friends. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah! I need to be convinced a little bit more. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah. And it is going to be a fun, fun evening of evaluations because nobody does evaluations like District 30. We have nine contestants. Nine. Wow. That's like an international semifinal round. So kudos to all the contestants today competing. Best wishes, wishes. I've been on that side of the table. It's a little nerve-wracking, but enjoy your moment up here to shine. And with that, I also want to thank the audience, you. Without, without you, we don't have them coming up here speaking. So give yourself a round of applause. And also thanks to all our functionaries, and our test speaker as well. We have a great evening of evaluations planned, but I do want to give some acknowledgments to some of the Toastmaster hierarchy that helped not just grow District 30 to the force that it is, but also continues that level of success, just pushing that bar even higher. So first I'd like to begin by asking all the uh, area district area uh, or area directors to stand up.
Thank you for all you do. Now I'd like to ask all the past district governors to stand up as well and be acknowledged. I'd like to acknowledge some of our dignitaries in this room today. Beginning with the second VP, Deepak Menon. Also, our region advisor for Region 5, Michelle Cable. Please stand. And also, our district director, Mr. Ivory Quinn. Our program quality director, Iqbal Acha. Our program quality director of District 30 and uh, the new district, Cassandra Lee. Our club growth director, Tiffany Howard. Club Growth Director of our current district and the expanding district, Bill Morell. Our Administration Manager, Eric John. Our Finance Manager, Deb Johnston. Relations Manager, Marilyn Smith. Our immediate past District Director, Ethel Goatee. Now I would li like to ask the Division directors to stand and be recognized when I call them their name. Beginning with Northwest Division Director Rose Schultz. Yeah. Rose. <laughs> Central South Division Director Shanitha Burton. Yeah. Central North Division Director, Wayne Taylor. <laughs> Southwest Division Director, Lawrence Fields. <laughs> the Northeast Division Director, Sue Chudasama. The Central East Division Director, Anise Anderson. And the North Division Director, Beth Weinstein. The South Division Director, Jerome Raleigh. Division Director, Jerry Tucker. I'd also like to recognize some past dignitaries, the past International Director, Mike Rafferty.
and I ask past Inter International Director Dick Storer. Is there any dignitaries I might have uh, missed at this time? Please speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, that's good. Now somebody once asked me, Garrett, what's the key to a great evaluation? And I always tell them the same thing. Listening. Somebody got it. Give them a gold star. Specifically, active listening. So we're going to do some active listening right now. By I'm going to pull out an imaginary cell phone. I want you to pull out your real cell phone. Hold it up high, show it to everybody, show it to your neighbor. And then show it to your neighbor while you turn it off. And I will wait while you guys power down. The reason I don't have mine up here, it's turned off and it's in a bag. So it's not on my body. And the reason we do that is we want to show respect, not only to the contestants, but the, to the contest itself. If you've ever been speaking and you're, you have to compete with somebody engaged in their cell phone, it's not fun. So let's show the proper respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. <laughs> Basically, contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits between that one minute of silence between the presentations. Otherwise, you'll be sequestered outside until there's an appropriate moment to to enter or exit. Thank you. With that said, on to the main event. Let the contest begin. First, I will give the order of speak, uh, speakers for the evaluation contest at this time. Contestant number one, James Dominella. Contestant number one, James Dominella. Contestant number two, Keith Essex. Contestant number two, Keith F. Essex. Contestant, evaluation contestant number three, Sandra Cheerhart. Evaluation con contestant number three, Sandra Cheerhart. Evaluation contestant number four, Jay Samstag. Jay Samstag, evaluation contestant number four. Evaluation contestant number five, Keisha Thomas. Evaluation contestant number five, Keisha Thomas. Evaluation contestant number six, Sonia Abotimin. Sonia Abotimin. Evaluation contestant number six. Evaluation contestant number seven. Shanita Akintande. Shanita Akintande. Evaluation contestant number seven. Evaluation contestant number eight. Sachin Sharma. Evaluation contestant number eight. Sachin Sharma. And the last contestant, evaluation contestant number nine, Heather Vaughn. Heather Vaughn, evaluation contestant number nine. With that, the first thing we need to do before we run a contest, evaluation contest, is have a test speaker. So please help me welcome to the lectern Cornelius Mosby, negotiate, then create. Negotiate, then create. Cornelius Mosby.
when you want something, the entire universe conspires to help you achieve the outcomes by Pedro Cuero. <clears throat> what if a stranger one day randomly walks up to you and asks you, what are your goals, what are your dreams, what are your deepest desires in life? How would you respond? Would you give them a more logical, reasonable, less embarrassing answer than what your actual goals, dreams, desires are? Ask yourself why. Why not? Now I want you to dig into your imagination just a little bit. Imagine a magical genie comes down and asks you the same thing. What are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your deepest desires in life? But he tells you, he tells you he can grant any of your goals, your deepest desires, and wishes. What would your response be now? Would your response be the same response that you just gave the stranger? Ask yourself why, why not? Now, take away the stranger and take away the genie. Imagine that you can negotiate and bargain with life the same exact way and can create the world exactly how you want it to be. How would you live your life? See, I believe everything in life is negotiable. Everything. If you want something, contemplate it for a second if you have to. Make a quick decision, make calculated steps, and it's yours. Some odds may appear to be more challenging depending on your perception. But the truth is, perception is just an illusion. For example, when I was a kid growing up, it was easier for me to ask my mom for candy, for money for candy than it was my stepdad. I was a mama's boy. Not that I didn't know that my, not that my stepdad didn't have any money, I was just more comfortable with my mom. And it took my mom not to have any money for me to build up the courage to finally ask my stepdad. At this point, my back is against the wall. I got to build up the courage, I got to build up the confidence if I want some boss to pay things. <laughs> so I made the strategic, calculated steps, and I asked them, and I retrieved the money. I was successful. The same rule applied to life, simple. Understand, throughout my journey of bargaining and negotiating with life, I ended up places I never thought I would be. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, Robert Taylor Projects, with my mom, my biological dad, my mother, my, I mean, my mom, my biological dad, my sister, and my brother. I witnessed my dad beat up my mom. I witnessed my dad go to jail for beating up on my mom. I witnessed my mom remarry again to another abusive guy, but this time he wasn't abusive towards her, he was abusive towards me and my siblings. I had to negotiate with life. Actually, I think she negotiated with life too because a couple years after that she remarried again. I guess three times the charm because this next guy was amazing, inspirational. He shaped me into the man that I am today. I watched him get his PhD, um, joined the Chicago Police Department. So he, he was someone that I had to look, he's someone that I, I got to look up to. Because on one side, growing up on the south side of Chicago, my friends were dropping like flies, down the gun violence, going to jail, dropping out of school. But he kept me on track to help me get to college in Iowa. I graduated with a four-year degree in 2012, came back home, I was broke. A month later, I got a job at a warehouse working at a temp agency. A month after that, I got hired as a social worker. I was proud. <coughs> a month after that, when I was coming off shift, my mom called me and told me my sister had been shot five times. She survived. But I moved in with her to help support her, get another job. I got another job as a social worker. I started taking online classes to get my master's degree. So throughout this process, my sister had people coming in and out of her life that was challenging my progress, so I had to make a decision. Either I stayed there with her problems, or I leave and go back home. I really didn't want to deal with my mom telling me to take out the trash. And <laughs> so I started living out my car for about four or five months until I had enough money to buy my own rental property on the south side of Chicago. And up until today, I incorporated a distribution business, and I'm closing on another rental property. And so throughout my journey of bargaining, I'm here in the Toastmaster event. I think it's a great opportunity. And I think that we are all in this together, honestly. Like, I feel like our spirits are literally connected with the universe. And I think that we all have a divine purpose. And this divine purpose comes in the form of a desire. Sometimes we ignore it out of fear, out of concept that has been given to us by society. But the truth is, these concepts, these perceptions, this fear is just an illusion. It's in, it's in constant motion. It's changing. 
You're not the same person you was five years ago, ten years ago. You're not the same person you was yesterday. Today you're a different person. But the one thing that's internal, the one thing that's changing is, is your spirit. And within your spirit is the power to negotiate with life. If you negotiate right, the universe will conspire and help you achieve your goals. That's it. I'm sorry. give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Sergeant at Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room for the five minutes to fill out their sheets, beginning when they are seated in that room. When that five minutes is over, escort the first contestant back to this room. And we will also ask our timers in this room to begin timing five minutes as well. Contestants are out of the room. So while they're completing their evaluations, I'd like to welcome out Cornelius Mosby back. <laughs> Just want to make sure you were still my up. Yeah. So Cornelius, give me the rundown. How long have you been with Toastmasters? Give a shout out to your club. Oh, Naperville Toastmasters. Normally at this time I ask, what is your Toastmasters level of education or achievement? You are a newbie, but I want to tell you something. You're on a stage here in front of a huge crowd. How does it feel? Nervous. <laughs> you do not look nervous at all. You're very cool, calm, and collect, doesn't he? Yes. I like the phrase in your speech. You mentioned negotiating life. What does that mean to you? We got a little taste in the speech. Um, negotiate. It means. Just, I, I believe everything in life is negotiable. Like, it, it, it comes down to what you want to like, like write down your goals, uh, your, your dreams, your desires, and telling yourself that every day, and, and just knowing and confidently knowing that, that life is going to give that to you. And if you don't want it, don't, don't take it. Go somewhere else. Take you know, take a different direction. And that's basically what it is: negotiating, not not just taking anything. And so, yeah. very well. Now, how does Toastmasters figure into your big plan, your goals of negotiating life? I think it's preparing me because honestly, I'm be confident. I'm, I'm going to be confident enough to say that I, I want to travel around the world and speak to people. You know, and Toastmasters is helping me tremendously already because uh, Ben and tell you when the first time I went up there for table topics, I was. I probably spent like three seconds up, literally. <laughs> so now I look like I was frozen. It's a world record. <laughs> yeah. It's helping me tremendously. From three seconds for table topics to a seven minute speech on the district stage, that's pretty awesome.
mentioned traveling and speaking. Where would you travel, ideally, and what would you speak about? Around the world. <laughs> anything. Anything that's inspiring. I, I want to inspire. Like, I want to represent inspiration. Yeah. And that's basically my goal. It's, it's, it's inspiring. You know, I feel like, like I said, I feel like we all have a divine purpose. And when I was a social worker, and I felt that I touched, I touched a lot of people. And it made me feel good. It actually made me feel, and it's very fulfilling to get that, you know, that feedback. And I realized that's, that's what I want to do. So, yeah. Yeah, well, excellent. Uh, I see here that you also mentioned meditation. How does that meditation come into your, kind of your perspective and philosophy on life? I can see that you're about helping others. <clears throat> Definitely. Meditation, it, it just, it's just about positive vibes. You know, um, I, I wake up every morning, I, I meditate for about 40, 40 minutes, and I'm just speaking to myself, just speaking all type of, you know, positive things into my life and the people that's in my life. And that's just basically, that's just basically. Excellent. This is a one-word answer about what inspires Cornelius the most, and I love it. And what is that word that inspires? is a big umbrella, so I want you to break down some of those aspects in your life where love touches other people's lives. Just, just family, just family, loved ones, and friends, anything, uh, a pet, you know. Absolutely. I can, I can totally identify. I think everybody in this room can identify with their family and even treating pets like family as well. Now tell the people about your favorite quote and please explain why it's your favorite quote. Which one did I put down? <laughs> it happens to the best of us. I've been guilty of the same thing. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for an example, like, me, I didn't, I mean, nothing's wrong with, you know, the south side of Chicago, but it's like, I realized I didn't want to be in that environment anymore, and so I had to work hard, better myself to get out, and so now I'm living in Naperville. And so, which is a, a suburbs of, you know, Chicago, and it's a lot more peaceful, and get more of a peace of mind, and, and you just meet a, a lot of good people. You know, the more you strive to be better, you just notice that the universe start bringing, it start, you start attracting that positive energy into your life, and that's basically how I take the quote, and that's why I like it so much. Now, you mentioned social work, and I can see, especially you helping the young, the young kids, I can see them looking up to you. You seem to have a magnetic personality, uh, what type of social work did you do? Oh, I did. Uh, I was with uh, troubled youth, average youth. Now, what, what, are, what are some of the activities you shared with them to, to make their lives better? Just about the type of environment that I, I lived in and how they, you know, how they, whatever predic predicament they're in, they don't have to settle for. They can, you know, oh, it's never too late, especially when you're at a, a youthful age and you have mentors around you giving you the tools and I just explained it to them. You know, most of them, you know, they were they were receptive to it. You know, some, you know, it was a little bit more challenging, but for the most part, they, they listen. Well, we thank you for your time on this district stage and I think it's probably the first of many negotiations to come. We have a gift for you before you leave here. A certificate for contest evaluation speaker. So evaluation contest test speaker. So now you're an award-winning speaker. Yeah. Only one month into Toastmasters. Right. And the world I will now ask the 
timer to put one minute of silence on the clock. Evaluation contestant number one, James Dominella. James Dominella, evaluation contestant number one. Contest Chair, Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and friends, and especially Cornelius. Your speech was fantastic, and today I'm here to share a few pieces of my evaluation with you. But, in being the unique person I am, I like to structure my evaluation a little bit differently than some of you guys may be used to. I'm a car person, so I tend to center it around car analogies, and of course, racing. Who doesn't like that? So. My evaluation today will be in the form of a three, two, one feedback. I'll give you three things which I thought really accelerated you ahead of the competition, two things that you could use to shift yourself into high gear, and one trophy that each and every one of us here today can take away from your speech. So first, the three things I thought that really accelerated you ahead. The first was you broke the ice with us. You spoke directly to us. You asked us what our deepest desires and dreams were. That really got us engaged. That was an excellent hook. It brought us in. We all felt compelled to listen to what you had to say and to learn from you as you were up there. Second, you did a great job with your structure of your speech. The speech itself was fantastic. Not only did you do that icebreaker to bring us in, you continued that throughout our speech, engaging us as you went along, telling your story, sharing with us your challenges, your growth opportunities, and how you started from here, and moved all the way through your whole life to where you are today, and how you got built into the person who came and spoke to us today. And that was fantastic. And third, I thought you were very polished, you were very professional, you were very composed up here. You made it seem like you were up here talking to a whole bunch of friends, just sharing your story, letting us get it to know you, and getting to know you on that level. You were only up here for a few minutes, but I feel, Cornelius, while you were up here, I, as well as the audience as a whole, really got to know you that much more. Then, two things, two takeaways that I think you could do to enhance yourself and to shift into high gear would be your ending. Your ending was just a little bit weak. You had a great ending, you had some great points, you wrapped it up for us really nicely, you just need to hammer it home. When you finish, a great method is just to kind of turn to the side, thank the Toastmaster, and just wait for the handshake. That's what I find works really smoothly, and it just lets the audience linger on that last point you made. That last point is what you should have everybody in the audience walk away with and remember from your speech. Second, I thought that you could have used your body language a little bit better. With the microphone, I know it's challenging. It's the first time I've used a microphone here as well. But you have to remember to turn your shoulders as you're speaking. Because occasionally, you speak to this side of the room, and it would be a little bit tough on the microphone to hear you over there. So then you have to walk over, make sure you're having your shoulders move with your body so we can hear you clearly as you're going throughout your entire presentation. And one trophy that I think we can all take away from your speech today is, it's true what they say, everything is negotiable. You are here, you share with us a story, you share with us your passion and where you came from and where you got to. And that is important. When you bring that 
You don't have to answer to who's going to take out the garbage or how you're going to get your next Boston baked beans. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cornelia. <laughs> And we have one minute of silence on the timer while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number two, Keith Essex. Keith Essex, evaluation contestant number two. Masters, welcome guests. Good to be you, Cornelius. Cornelius got up here and gave us a great presentation using a lot of good techniques that he used throughout his Toastmasters. He was up here with a good stage presence. He was able to deliver his message. It's almost like he presented an icebreaker within his presentation at the same time. So I appreciate learning a little bit about your and your history as well as learning about the message of how to negotiate what you have to create. So you did a very effective job of using them with stage as your, your reference point. You, you used very good gestures, natural gestures. You did have one tendency to come back together and close your hands in a class position two or three times while you were doing that. But naturally, your, your gestures were very easy to understand. I liked the way that you were able to present to the audience a message that came from your heart, came from your tough experience that you had throughout your life. So the message was very well appreciated, I'm sure, by the audience, as well as by myself. If I was to offer suggestions, it might be you have a voice similar to mine and it doesn't come across with a lot of vocal inflection and a lot of up and down beats. So if you could maybe increase a few of the rates or the pitch that you speak in, it would probably enhance your presentation. You had a little, little chance to use humor in your presentation when you talked about going to live with your brother says, I don't want to take out the trash. You could somehow inflect your voice in there to make a little bit more emphasize in there and add to the humor that you project. I believe that you were very sincere in your message and you were very well versed in how you wanted to present. So it, I appreciate the fact that we learned from you on more, more information on how to negotiate. When you first opened your presentation, you did three things very effectively. You asked the same question three different ways. You talked about what would you do if a stranger came up to you? What would you do if a, a genie came up to you? And what would you do if neither one of those came up to you and asked you the same question? How would you answer? So I think that was very effective. It captured the audience's attention. And at least in my mind, great credibility to the questions that you were asking. Why or why not do this? One minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots.
Evaluation contestant number four, Jay Samstag. Jay Samstag, evaluation contestant number four. Some of the things that you know you might might have improved, unlike well, perhaps just like me, you could have moved around the stage. We had a fair amount more room up here. You pretty much held held your position, and that's acceptable. But you may want to do that with another speech. Some of the things uh, the only real areas of improvement was some of the things I think you may have either un you know you may have left out. Okay, or at least I would have liked to hear you. <laughs> One in particular, you described your sister who got shot. I would really like to know what happened with her. I gather she's still alive, but that's an even more difficult experience, I think, than some of the stuff you went through. So that would have been good. The other, this was largely an historical speech. I would have liked to know a little bit more about what's happening with you right now. You alluded to it. Could have snuck a minute in there in uh, current circumstances, because it sounds like you're doing very well in spite of it. I was also interested, perhaps, a little bit more about your mother. She sounds like something else. Okay, <laughs> uh, her experiences are comparable to the what you described, since they were part of the same scene. It's really great. They're great storytellers. If you can use the same skills on different stories, it would be helpful too. I have, uh, what I really know is I was hoping, for your sake, the story was really fiction, because it's very tough to believe, but I don't think it was fiction. Because it's a very tough childhood. Frankly, I would like to hear more speeches from you. This year. And we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. One minute of silence.
Evaluation, contestant number five, Keisha Thomas. Keisha Thomas, evaluation contestant number five. But even the best, most engaging story falls flat without an inspiring message, and you delivered on that. You opened with a quote about the world conspiring to help you get what you want. You followed it up later by saying that everything in life is negotiable. It actually made me think of another quote that a lot of you are probably familiar with, speak those things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. And you have spent your life doing that, and it was very obvious. So as much as I was enjoying your speech, there were just a few things that I thought could possibly give it a little more oomph to augment the feeling that all of us were having. You have physical stage presence, just your physical being. But I thought that you could have maybe capitalized on it a little bit more by really making use of the space. You've got long legs. You could walk all over here, <laughs> talk to some people here, make eye contact, really capitalize on how you're making your audience feel. Also, project. You have it in you. I can hear the bass and the strength of your voice, but there were a few times when I thought you were getting kind of lost as you walked over here, kind of swallowing the floor, kind of swallowing your words. So I would definitely encourage you to project to your audience so that everyone, from the people right here to the furthest reaches of the room, hear everything you're saying, because the message you have is so important and the world needs it right now. So. Please, please project that message. And lastly, I would encourage you to insert some pauses. As I mentioned earlier, your story was an emotional roller coaster, and I was with you every moment of the way. Oh my goodness, your mother married this abusive man, now she married another abusive man, and oh my god, now she married a great guy, and I'm going to college, and now I'm living in my car. And there was a lot of that, and I was loving it, but there were some moments that really had emotional impact that I didn't think landed just because it went a little too quickly. When you spoke about your sister getting shot, there was an audible gasp in this room, across the room. But you were on to the next thing before I even had a chance to process what that meant for Cornelius and his life. And I really wanted to feel that. I really wanted to savor that. So just a few pauses. But like I said, great physical stage presence, inspiring story, emotional message that really connects with people. Just a few little tweaks, and you knock it out of the park. Thank you very much. Silence while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number six, Sonia Elbotimin. Sonia Elbotimin. Evaluation contestant number six. Wow. 
great recipe for overcoming adversity. To Mr. Contest Chair, my fellow Toastmasters, honored, distinguished, and special guests, and especially to you, Cornelius. What an inspiration you gave us of how you overcame. As you spoke, my mind went to Rocky Balboa and the fight scene. <laughs> great job. You gave us a great recipe. And with any recipe, you start out with basic ingredients. The first thing you start out in your introduction, you gave us a quote. You asked a question to get the audience buy-in, and then you went right into your personal stories. Telling personal stories is great because it gives you that credibility. You're the expert in anything you've went through. The other thing you did in your, I love that you did in your speech, is that you actually had gestures. When you spoke of numbers, one, two, three, five times, you started your speech walking, using just the center. You're pretty tall, much taller than I, I know. But the whole speaking stage is your area. You gave us a timeline. In that timeline, you talked about three different relationships. Relationship one, and when you tell those personal stories, especially when it comes to a bad relationship, you want to pause and make sure you show that that was a distaste for you. In your speaking, you use kind of the same facial expression. When you went to relationship number two, same thing. When you went to relationship number three, move over so that you can use your speaking stage and three times is a charm. Smile about that. We want to know that you reached that point. You also talked about having those adversities, but then coming up on top. When you speak of adversities, we know when we're in a fight, it can knock us back. So step back a little bit. When it, but I finished my college degree. You want to come back up. When you ask the question at the beginning of your speech, I want you to pause to give the audience time to answer. And you can simply do that by asking for a raising of hands. When you spoke of your sister getting shot five times, and you heard that all from the audience, pause. Give us time to take that in. With any recipe, you always want to throw in that extra spice. So when you throw in that extra spice, you know that takes your recipe to another level. I want you to work on using those gestures, using the stage, you are an inspiration. I would love to see you in the International Speech Contest. Right. Mr. Chair. One minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number seven, Shanita Akintande. Shanita Akintande, evaluation contestant number seven. So the speech that I heard a moment ago 
I have the honor of presenting not only an evaluation for, but I'm going to call that not only a speech, but a testimony. And I have a confession. Madam Contest Chairperson, distinguished Toastmasters, honored Toastmasters, and honored guests. What Cornelius did when he was up here earlier was not simply tell us a story. He did that in a bona fide manner. He gave us visual pictures of what he had to share, and he summarized it in a very poignant manner. But what he did for me was give me permission. He gave me permission to go back and do what he said at the beginning of his speech was all possible because whatever we put out in the universe, he said, it will conspire to help us achieve whatever that goal is. And for me, it's, am I going to go ahead and finish that PhD I started about 10 years ago? Am I going to write that book that's in my heart? Am I going to make mustard or collard greens tomorrow night for dinner? <laughs> decisions, decisions. But whatever the case is, Cornelius told us in his presentation that there's not only a story that's going to be told, but there is not only a testimony, there has to be the test. He gave us examples of those tests, did he not? You told us, Cornelius, about how your mother overcame the abuse that she suffered and remarried and soared to higher heights. How your sister was shot five times. I felt both those instances, and I saw that you did too. Here are my recommendations to him of something he can do to make those stories even more powerful. Pause. Ask yourself, he told us. Pause. Dig into your imagination. Pause. When you were asking your mama for those juju beans or whatever it was you wanted to eat, look up at her when you ask her, but you're rather tall, so maybe you're looking down. <laughs> even more effectively into what he had to say. I would like to also recommend for you, Cornelius, that when you give a speech to us, tell us to fasten our seatbelts, tell us to sit up, because I have goosebumps when he was telling that story. So I think that that is a story that you should tell continually, tell it high, tell it wide. Because what we know, all of us in this room, ensconced between these walls, underneath these lights, on top of this floor, is that there are many kinds of masters. They're grill masters, puppet masters, Table topics masters, step masters. But there's only one group that can get over the uhs, the ahs, that know how to go into a meeting and do impromptu, extemporaneous speaking, that can leave a meeting somehow different or better as a result of what they got out of that meeting, and that's a toastmaster. Say it with me, a toastmaster. One more time, a, a toastmaster. Toast and that is what you are, my dear, a toastmaster. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick reminder to silence all cell phones and electronic devices, and please put one minute of silence on the timer while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number eight, Sachin Sharma. Sachin Sharma, evaluation contestant number eight. Mr. Contest Master, fellow contestants, and most of all, Cornelius, my great negotiator. Today I'll uh, talk about some of the things that really work well in your speech. I'll talk about three or four key recommendations and the one thing that really stood out for me. Overall, great job, well done. The first thing, you had a great title, 
it really made me think and ponder, what is this man going to tell me? I negotiate every day, but negotiate and create. Really intriguing. Second, you connected well with the audience. You asked rhetorical questions to begin with. I mean, who doesn't want to think about a genie and what they can do for you? <laughs> Third, you had a great structure. You walked us through the story of your life, paddly talking about the inspiration and drew from you for you, the metaphors that really stood out, and you really exemplified that message that was consistently drawn throughout. You had a great purpose, both inspirational and informative. From a delivery perspective, excellent use of stage space. It's a very small area and you're a towering person, but you really use it very well. You're a nice, steady voice, very powerful, great use of hand gestures, well done. The one thing that stood out the most for me was the emotional connection. As you told us your life story, I felt I was there, simply because it was so simple, yet so powerful. And throughout, that emotion really stood out for me. If I were to think of a few key areas of growth, the first would be passion. You had a lot of emotion in your story. I felt you could do with a lot more passion. And that can come from voice modulation, just the highs and lows of your delivery as you speak. Clearly, there were areas which were really emotional. We just wanted to feel, I just wanted to know how you felt about them. <coughs> Second, dialogue delivery. There were instances, for example, the, the humorous note that you talked about when you asked about candy. Maybe tell us what you actually said, what was the response, that will really help me be present in that situation. Finally, from a content perspective, I'd love to hear more about what you're doing now. You've negotiated well. Where are you going to take that? Tell me more about that. And maybe as a fourth point, a little eye contact with the front of the room. I know you're a tall person, but that really helps connect. So to summarize, great job done in terms of connecting with the audience, having an intriguing title, good structure and flow, great purpose, use of metaphors, and excellent delivery and use of stage space. And with a couple of recommendations on more passion, dialogue delivery, and the content extension, you can be an even great negotiator, both in life and Toastmasters. Thank you. We have one minute silence while the judges mark their ballots. Evaluation contestant number nine, Heather Vaughn. Heather Vaughn, evaluation contestant number nine. to be able to connect with an audience. Now, 
with every speech, there are three things that we typically do really, really well, and then there's two things that we may want to work on. The first, the first three of the things you did well was you engaged the audience. That is so important. You asked us questions. You made us think. You said, use your imagination. How have you not reached your goals? You gave us stories as well, which is key and essential to, meet, to reaching your audience and using them as a device to be engaged so that you're more comfortable with them and they're more, com more comfortable with you. Which is an almost an advanced technique. Very well done. Your stage presence was really well done. I mean, you command everyone's attention in this room. You, we can't miss you, you're kind of tall, which is good. But by standing here, you have such a poise and a presence that we want to, we gravitate towards you, we want to listen to you, we want to know more about you. And your use of tone. That's another speech, a speech device that you used that we were able to understand every word you had to say. There wasn't, even when you got nervous, you were able to recover, and we were able to still stay engaged and learn from you. Now, with every speech, we have things that we want to learn. For you, the two things I noticed was content. You have a lot of content. And I think when you narrow that content down by selecting one story, uh, the story of your mother's first marriage, her second marriage, or even when she met the man of her dreams, those all contain lessons that we're able to learn from you. When you give us all your stories at once, that almost puts us in a place where you need to have a five to seven day conference. So we can just learn about you because you have such a rich, a rich experience. So taking that one story, realizing that you have five to seven minutes, because you have roughly 200 people that you have to take on a tour of your life. So you want to make sure that we have a condensed understanding of what, you want us to, what message you want us to take from you, and you're, you'll be able to touch more people that way. And this, the last thing that I noticed that you could work on was pausing. It was a very content-dense speech that without pausing, we weren't able to really grasp an idea. Sometimes you would give us a really heavy topic, like your sister being shot five times. Some of us were still on that part of your story because it's so heavy. So make sure that you pause so we can, are able to take it in. But don't lose sight of what you've done well. Presence, using the stage well. I look forward to seeing you grow in the future. Mr. Postmaster. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges finalize their ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters.
this your contest, Toastmaster? Yes. We have all the ballots. Yeah. Excellent. It may be near Halloween, but we have a treat for you. We're going to give the results in real time after the contestant interviews. So we'll look, no waiting after dinner. At this time, I would like to invite our contestants up on the stage in the order that they spoke. It's a small stage, so we might have to snake around, so please do so. Toastmasters, what club are you representing, and what is your Toastmasters education level? Sure. I've been in Toastmasters now just about three and a half years. I'm with the Allstate Relatively Speaking Club in Northbrook, Illinois, and I had just got my ACB and ALB. All right. Nice, nice job. So you missed drone flying on one of your hobbies, and I want to know, when did this get started, and where do you fly your drone? So this actually got started fairly recently. A friend of mine had an extra drone that he gave to me, and I started flying it around in the neighborhood. I've been doing it now uh, a couple months, and it's really fun to get the cool aerial shots, and you can get some pretty spectacular crashes as well, and some of those, so it's a lot of fun. Now, I hope you're not spying on the neighbors. Is that getting you in trouble? I am not, no. I'm staying out of trouble with it. Very well. Well, here's a certificate for participation on the uh, evaluation contest. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Bob. <laughs> Keith Essex, please tell us how many years you've been with Toastmasters, the club you're representing, and what's your highest level of Toastmasters achievement. I am... Um... I Toastmaster for 36 years now. I've been, I'm representing the Glendale Heights Toastmaster Club, 134-8043 in the West Division. And my highest level of distinction is the Distinguished Toastmaster. Now you have a favorite quote. Could you please tell Toastmasters here, what that quote is? Oh, some people know it already. Yeah, the quote came, the quote is, if it is to be, it's up to me. And that quote is not original from me. It came from one of the first Toastmaster conferences that I attended back in 1980 or 81. And it came from one of the past district governors at that time. I think it was his theme for the year. But it didn't writing a, a note with me, and I've retained it ever since, that if I want to get anything done, it's not, if it is to me, it, it's got to be up to me. That's right. Nice. One last tidbit, you mentioned cooking. And since I can't cook at all, what are some of the favorite meals that you cook? <laughs> oh, I cook a variety of different things, but I enjoy baking probably more than cooking, because I, I enjoy the pastries, I enjoy the cookies and the different things I can make that nobody else wants to make for me. But I, I can also... I cook a variety of meals. I like slow cooking, so if I put something in in the morning, it's ready for when I get done in the evening, so I don't have to worry about it. So I do a variety of different things. Well, thank you again, Keith. Here is a certificate of participation. So, uh, James Samstag, tell us how many years you've been with Toastmasters, what club you're representing, and your 
highest level of Toastmaster education? I've been in Toastmasters over 25 years. I'm with Speakers Forum Toastmasters, which I believe is the oldest club in the city, not in the district. And what's the other question? <laughs> highest level of Toastmaster education. Distinguished Toastmaster. Wow. DT. Right. Awesome. All right. Now you list occupation as retired. I have that one million dollar question. How is retired life? It's quieter than working. <laughs> you mentioned you, some of your interests are sailing. Where do you sail? Well, right now I don't sail because the boats come out of the water by the end of this month. And mine came out last week. Very sad. <laughs> so Lake Michigan for the most part. Yes. Sir. Oh, awesome. Do you ever go uh, anywhere? In America to to sail? Uh, in the you have to be careful. In my boat, no, it's Lake Michigan. <laughs> okay. in, in other boats, I've sailed other places. Okay, fair enough. Well, thanks again for participating in the evaluation contest, Jay. <laughs> and now I'm going to ask them to do the flip flop. Contestants in the rear come to the front. Contestants in the front go back to the rear. <laughs> well done. Keisha Thomas, please tell us how many years you've been in Toastmasters, what club you're representing today, and your highest level of Toastmaster education. Okay, I realized that in the last contest I said the wrong thing. I said four years, it's actually five. And I'm here representing people into public speaking. I didn't intend to this club, but that's great too, thank you. <laughs> and I am an ACB. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Um, you have list your favorite quote, I'll let you say it. Okay, I have several favorite quotes, so I'm double checking. <laughs> do or no do, there is no try. And who said that, may I ask? You know Absolutely. <laughs> okay, because that's what people are going to think of a geek. Yoda, Yoda. 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 Okay. Yoda. This is Post Masters, we don't judge. Okay. But no, I just like it because it really forces you to do something. I mean, there are a lot of things in my life that I'm like, oh, I'll try to do this, I'll try to do that. But it's like I I want to commit to do the things that I want to do in life. And so that's why I chose that. So who's the Yoda to your Luke in Toastmasters? So many great Toastmasters in my club. It's a very and I know everyone says this about their club, but our club <laughs> is, is very supportive, very supportive environment. Uh, several of my club mates are here. I can't pick just one because I draw inspiration in different ways from each person. So, well, good Keisha, answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> well, Keisha, may the force be with you. Here's Sonia Elbow Timmon, please tell us how many years with Toastmasters, what club you're representing, and your highest level of achievement in Toastmasters. I have been in Toastmasters four years. I represent High Verbal Aces. Hey! And I have my CC. Excellent. Let's give her a round of applause. You mentioned that you're inspired by seeing others reach their goals. Could you explain? I feel you. Yes, I am big, as Cornelius is, on the underdogs achieving. So I spend my life helping others create their plan of actions and following through. I'm that was my personal story also. So that's what I do. Excellent, excellent. You also list here that you're a spoken word artist. I love that phrase. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> Explain that a little bit. So spoken word artist, I create poetry and then I get on stage and perform a piece of poetry. Excellent. Well, your poetry in motion, I'm going to give you an award here for a uh, certificate of participation. And thank you for coming to the uh, evaluation contest and competing.
Shaniva Akantande, to please tell us the number of years you've been in Toastmasters, your highest level of Toastmasters education, and what club you're representing. Okay, so I'm representing View Masters. Yay! Okay. <laughs> I've been a member of Toastmasters since 1997, and if you're doing the math, that's 19 years. I'm a former uh, area governor when they called them that. I've been a club specialist, uh, youth leadership person, and uh, I have an ACG. i got to get this terminology correct currently. Uh, I joined Toastmasters, I think, the year after I got married. So I got married in 96. That means I've been married 20 years this year. Yay! Yay. I joined Toastmasters so I can learn how to curse my husband out without saying ums and errs. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you I don't know. <laughs> I heard it. Now, you, your favorite quote, could you explain and tell oh, what is your favorite quote? quote? Before I tell you my favorite quote, well, I have to say you're named after my favorite popcorn. Garrett's, <laughs> not only Garrett's oh, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I started. Um, <laughs> my favorite quote, I too have a lot of favorite quotes. One of them is, you are enough. That's it. And our steps are divinely ordered. And we explain what that, the, the second one, our steps are divinely ordered. I don't know, it sounds good though, does it? <laughs> it means that, help me out, Cornelius, it means that... One step at a time. One step at a time. One purpose at a time. One purpose at a time. There you go, Garrett. Garrett's popcorn. That's it. Thank you. Well, thank you. I want to present to you a certificate of participation. Thank you again. Thank you. Can I pose for a picture? Does somebody have a camera? I don't have a camera. You got it. You got it. Thank you. We got it. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, you guys. Sachin Sharma, please tell us how many years you've been with Toastmasters, what club you're representing today, and your highest level of Toastmaster achievement. Sure. Thanks, Kevin. I'm with uh, Bimo Harris, club number 8968. And uh, I think the same upside down, by the way. Uh, I've been with Toastmasters about a year. It feels like a lifetime. And I'm working diligently on my CC and CF. Excellent, excellent. Well done. And you list under hobbies as mask collecting, and this is kind of, I'm curious with Halloween coming up, are you dressing in a costume? Are you pulling off your favorite mask uh, off the wall to put on? Yes, I am. Uh, I dressed up as uh, a pirate, uh, not wearing any mask, just a beard. But uh, mask collecting is my hobby because I love traveling, and every place I go, I pick up a nice mask. Uh, sometimes I have to negotiate hard with my wife to keep it because she tends to throw them out because they're so grotesque. But um, I have a big wall full of about two dozen masks telling me about my travel escapades. Fair enough. So the wife is very understanding of your, your collection. That's very good. You mentioned traveling as well. Or some of your, where have you traveled? I've been to uh, about 35 countries as far as work or otherwise in uh, Africa, in Europe, in uh, Asia. And uh, for the time being, my wife and I and kids are looking to travel the US and I think it's a great country, a lot of places to go on my bucket list, so checking them off one by one. Good deal, and I, which, uh, I'm sure you picked up a lot of masks at all those, those countries, so. Well, thank you for participating today and being a contestant. Heather Vaughn, please tell us how many years with Toastmasters, what club you're representing today, and your highest level of Toastmaster education. I have been with Toastmasters for three and a half years. I'm representing Midwest Speaking Professionals. <laughs> and I have a CC. Excellent. Now, list, listed under what inspires you the most, you put, when people doubt me. Explain. <laughs> That's the best view. I guess for me, I'm a person who's highly intrinsically motivated. That means that everything that, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm influenced by other people, but ultimately, it's my action that gets things done. So when someone thinks I can't do it, it's like, you want to bet? Excellent. 
Now, you list that you're finishing a book, but you said your notable accomplishment is finishing the hard part of your book, which begs the question, what's the hard part of your book? Just having it at, at that point. So everything is essentially done. It's just I have to decide how I want to approach it, if I, like a workbook or a regular book. So yeah. Does the editor try to motivate you? I, like, I doubt you're going to meet this deadline, Heather. <laughs> I'll show you. You would think with her feedback, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Heather, there's no doubt that you're a great speaker. Um, I'm going to give you a certificate of participation and continue success. Um, just go back to your seats. As I said, we have a treat for you, results in real time. So at this point, I would like to introduce and welcome to the stage our district director, Ivory Quinn, and the rest of the Quintet.
Cornelius. I met you in the hallway. You're holding out on me. I'm just this new Toastmaster, first time here. Didn't say anything about being the target speaker. I'm going to track you down in Naperville. <laughs> Couple of things to remember, guys. Tonight is a humorous contest, part two of our contest at this event. And if you are involved in the humorous contest, the briefings are at 4.30, correct? They're at 4.30. Look for the contest chair. Do we have a room? In the boardroom. So 4.30 briefings for the humorous contest in the boardroom. For the functionaries, how about the contestants? Grove room for the contestants. We'll see you back here at 5 o'clock for our dinner program. <laughs>